Welcome back to the real world example series. So in this video, let's go ahead and test the mechanism that we've created just to see it in action. What I want you to do is to close and open the file. So make sure you've got a newly open file here. So what happens when we hit analyze files? Have a think yourself. You might want to stop the video. I'm going to hit the button now. We can see we get this message flashing up saying not ready. It says no ready, but it should say not ready to begin analysis. Why is that? Let's go back into the code and we can see it's because of this variable here. This OK to start variable. If we're not ready, then we're going to get this message box flashing up saying we're not ready to begin the analysis. So we can go ahead now. First, let's hit that spelling mistake. And what would make us ready to do the analysis? Well, we know we've got to look at this modular approach, run the first part of this modular approach, the first routine. We do that by hitting validate files. Files OK. You can now analyze files. If I hit analyze files now, everything is now OK. That's that's the power of this module level variable we're using. So the first routine sets the value of variable to true because the variable is at the module level. That value is held in the variable and other subroutines can use it later. So that's the beauty for me. Oh, I think everything's beautiful in Excel VBA. You know this, but that for me is the beauty of this little combination of routines. Let's go ahead and clear out this message box now. We don't need any talk uh, anymore. So we're at a bit of a, a new phase in the in this task. So what are we going to do? Well, luckily we've got all of our notes, all of our uh, notes here, our annotations. And let's go ahead and think about how are we going to reference the other files? That's something we're definitely going to have to do, reference the other files. So we're going to need a place to store some information. How do we store some information in Excel VBA? In the spreadsheet, we can use we can use a cell. In Excel VBA, we use a variable, of course. And there's different ways to do this. You could use an object variable to do this. I've preferred over the years using a string variable. A weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners. On your computer, click join below this video for more. So we're going to go ahead, use a string variable here. And let's say new file name new file name as string. Again, it seems like quite a long variable name, doesn't it? I think I'm the only person on YouTube using these long variable names. For me, it's worth it because it helps us understand what the variables are doing. Old file name as string. So we've got a place to store the new file name, a place to store the old file name. So we need to get values into those variables. Let's store some information in those variables. So how do we do that? Let's take the variable name new file name equals and then I'm going to start this with this workbook. Now, why is it important this workbook? Well, this workbook means the workbook that contains this code. So that in itself is useful, but there's a more important point. We're working with multiple files here. It's difficult enough when you've got to work with multiple sheets in Excel VBA. We know when we work with multiple sheets, we've got to be explicit and clear in our own heads, then tell VBA which sheet we want to work with. Otherwise, we could end up working with the wrong sheet. It's the same with files. We've got to be explicit. Make sure Excel is working with the right file. That's why we say this workbook. So we can say this workbook and then the name of the sheets. I'm just going to go down a bit here. Uh, control. And then dot range. Well, what's the range? Uh, back to the worksheet uh, C3. Looks like the range. C3. So again, a quick test and the testing might seem excessive. And again, other people on YouTube don't do this much testing, but this for me works steady systematic, keep the stress levels down, keep those coding sessions long and productive. So now if I hit analyze files, what's going to happen? We should have a message box flashing up saying new data, something you put in, tested. We're confident in it. Let's move on. So the next uh, variable we've got to work with is the old file name. So I'm typing in old file name here. Then there's a good learning point here. So we could just repeat this, of course. Go ahead, repeat this and make a quick change. But something I'm trying to integrate into my practice is using with and end with. And this allows us to economize on the amount of code. It means we can use less code, easier for us to understand, easier for VBA to process. It's more efficient. So we're going to take this syntax and cut it, Control X and then control V, but we don't want the full stop or the period. We don't want that here, but we do want that 
here. Otherwise, if we just say, say range C, C3, Excel is just going to look at the active sheet, which could be a different sheet, could even be a different file. We want to avoid that. So we put the dot in there, then the old file name. Let's go super lazy, control C, control V. Then in the new file name is going to be in C4. And then what do we need to remember to do? I did break one of my rules there, of course, because when we open a new construct, we should close it straight away. Conditional statement, loop or with, end with. Right, so what are we expecting now? Let's do a little test here. Uh, use the and sign to, to link together, con concatenate uh, these different elements. Old file name, underscore file, underscore name. So we should now get, get those two names flashing up. Hit the analyze files button, new data, old data. Excellent. So we've successfully created that variable. That variable is storing some information. But can we do a bit better than that? Can we go and reference the file? And let's just find a value in the file. I've got a new data file here open. So let's see if we can get VBA to flash up the value in B5. That's not of massive practical value, but it does show that our code is working. If we can get Excel to do that reference and flash up the information. So in B5, we've got prod 058. So let's go ahead, use this message box. And let's say workbooks, a new work. How about my spelling? Terrible. Workbooks new file name, file underscore name, a weekly live Excel VBA tutorial with Chris and a small group of learners. On your computer, click join below this video for more. Bracket and then the first sheet in the file, sheets one. And then what's the range we're looking at? B5 in this case. Now you can see I've got a different file active now, a different sheet is active. This code should still work because we're being explicit about the workbooks that we're working with, or at least we'll see after we do this test. OK, so I'm going to go back now. In fact, just to prove this, let, let's run this uh, from here. I'm just looking through. Is this going to work? This should work, but this is a good, quick, good test for us. We've got a different workbook active now hitting the F5 key. We've got product 58 there. OK, so super powerful stuff. This we've got uh, variables here, module level variable. We've got routine level variables storing information. We're interacting with different sheets, interacting with different worksheets. And this task I've set up with the setup we're using here. I've set up exactly how I would set this up uh, for a customer. So you're getting a real feel about how an Excel professional would do a real world VBA task. I'll see you in the next video.